And I'm Trisha, and I'm not. And welcome back to another episode. Right? Are you dying to know? Because Trisha's dying to I know. I am dying to know. Hello, everybody. How Hello. are you all? Hello. It's a bit warm, isn't it? it yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's been a funny summer. Yeah. It's got really hot and then got really cool, and but not consistently hot like it normally is. No. Nope. We've only been in our pool once, and we're in Queensland in Australia. Oh, Usually it's, it's stinking. It's usually really hot by now. And anyway, I've just been away for a while earlier on a few weeks ago mm. for a week away up the sunshine coast and it wasn't that hot again in the pool mm. or the sea not mm. that i go in the sea in the sea crazy australians in the sea the sea we don't call it the sea but anywho um <laughs> all right today we've got a question from holly Hi, now this holly. is a super old question i believe sorry holly it's taken so long to get to this one yeah. Um, we didn't quite know how to approach it because it's quite specific. But what we're going to do is we're going to give you a bit of a generalised answer because obviously we're not there and Tracy hasn't seen the situation yeah. you were talking about. So Holly's question was with regard to um, a person who was killed um, with a firearm, right. an automatic firearm, okay. um, shot 22 times. Wow. And uh, Holly was wondering what sort of prep would have had to be done for that person to be viewed. Now, of course, we don't know the circumstances about whether the sh shots were in the face or what reconstruction was needed or any yeah. of that stuff. Was it close range? Was it further away? I assume that makes a difference. Yeah. yeah. But what we thought we'd do is talk generally about what Tracy's knowledge is of gunshot wounds yeah. and how she goes about treating them uh, in the situation she's had. Now, interestingly, being in Australia, and thank goodness, we don't have a situation where it happens much. No, no, no. We've, and, yeah, we've got very strict gun laws. And yeah. certainly not with automatic weapons. I don't think I've ever had an automatic weapon death that I know of. The only ones I've actually known are, are small handguns and uh, shotguns. You know, they're the weapons that I, I know have been used yeah. when I've looked after somebody, you know, taking care of them. But as an automatic, I don't think I've had anybody um, die from an automatic. So you wouldn't actually gun. know what that would do to a person? Not really, no. So. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. thankfully that's not a thing we have here much. No. It does happen. But it does, yeah. It just does. hasn't fallen in your lap. Yeah, no. I mean, good shop ones happen a, mm. a lot, mm -hmm. you know, and it's usually on my side. But more often than not, unfortunately, you know, homicide is bad, but it's suicide that okay. I see a lot of gunshot wounds from. Okay. Yeah. All right. So um, let's talk about the type of damage that different firearms do in your experience from what you've had. Do you, uh, have you got paperwork that tells you what firearm was used or like you wouldn't know what was used? No, no, we don't get details like what no. the police or the coroners would get. We don't, yeah. we just get gunshot wound you know and that's about it but from years of experience I know if it's a small handgun or if it's been um, a, a, a shotgun mm -hmm. you know because you can tell the difference the small handgun a lot of uh, people that I've had through when they've um, died with a small handgun one to the head if it's been suicide close range it's just usually a really small hole with a burn around it but not often an exit wound. Right. You know, it's... it's and the same in the torso. So yes, if it was a shooting, say, yeah. to the chest or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it will just be the entrance. Okay. And, and it's like the little bullet hole that you yeah, see... Yeah, it's about... Um, in the movies. You can, yeah, it's just mm, usually okay. very small. Okay. Uh, and if it's close to the head, you get the burn. If it's a right. bit further away, you, you don't get that burn. Uh, if it's with a shotgun... Um, it, and it depends where that shotgun's hit, but a lot of the times it's been people dying from suicide and it's very close range to the head, so either under the chin or in the mouth or to the side of the head, and that usually takes the face off. Right, so it just explodes. Yes. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and same with the torso, I would expect. If, yeah, if it's down in this area, it's open wounds and exit wounds for a shotgun. So there's an exit wound, wound yeah. as well. Um, yeah, um, but it, with the, the small handguns are usually okay. very hard to find an exit wound if there ever is one. Okay, so how do you treat, say, a bullet hole? Just a small yep. one from a handgun. Uh, yeah, when I uh, get a gunshot wound from a small uh, gun, normally there's not an exit wound anyway, so say it's somewhere in the head area. Um, obviously that's done a lot of damage to the brain inside and it probably has you know, exploded it normally inside because you usually get bleeding from the ears. 
No oh, way. Um, okay. So you know that there's damage, obviously extreme internal damage, um, because we've now got leakage of blood from the ears. Uh, so the first thing is obviously, like I do with everybody, is do my body prep as wash um, the body and you know clean everything off because a lot of time there can be a bit blood from the ears from the wound. There's not usually a, a, an awful lot of uh, blood or anything. It's just usually just like the bleeding from the ears that you'll find that there's and a little bit of blood looks like it's gone a long way. So a clean um, person first, um, and then I'll get all. All my equipment ready and again um, it'll be quartering that I use a lot of so I need to quarterize that area but what I do this time with the quarterant um, I'll, I'll put some on a cotton I'll place it into the wound while I'm doing the washing so that's quarterizing the outside area while I'm washing take that off but then I'll um, fill a lot of syringes with the quarterant and inject through the wound um, and I'm injecting is like basically through the wound through into the brain area and putting a lot of quartering in there so we can try and stop this uh, so it dries leakage. it up or? yeah so I'm, yeah. I'm basically drying the in, internal of the head up because uh, a lot of the times when they've come from the coroners because it's an obvious gunshot wound to the head there won't be any autopsy performed on the head right. so it's not open so right. If it's open, then it's easier to clean because then I can reopen it. But I don't open heads if they're not no, they're open. Not. And the brain's still in there, obviously, yeah, if they yeah, haven't been opened at the coroner. Yeah, you know, it's right. damaged, but still in, inside the uh, skull. So um, I will inject a lot of quarterant into that wound um, and clean it up and clean it up with my cotton, with quarterant, and with my forceps go right in and clean it out with uh, cotton. And once I've cleaned and I'm satisfied that it's dried enough, I will then um, pack uh, that area with autopsy powder, um, which absorbs fluid as well. I'll put quite a bit in, in there, and then I'll also put the... Um, the sunny gel in which is the autopsy gel which is an embalming gel and is that what you use to sort of plug it up yeah i'll put that into that that one stops the decomposition because it's an embalming chemical and also uh, stops the smell if there was a smell to happen from the decomposition and it does plug it slightly but it is you know it seems like hair gel mm. it's quite um it's quite uh jelly like but then after i've done all of that i will then put the um autopsy putty inside mm -hmm. as well so that's given it another seal so we've got another seal and this is all to try and stop leakage as well because we may still have some leakage in there and then i will um cut little cotton to the right size just slightly bigger than the uh, area where the wound is put some quartering on that cotton place it on then put some dry cotton over the top and place that on and then cut a little bluey, you know, mm -hmm. piece of bluey, because then we've got that plastic on the outside of the bluey. Put that on top and then tape it. Um, sometimes I will put a suture through, but with a head head wound, you can't pull it closed really well, so it's quite open. And But sometimes right. I can do a cross stitch, um, which basically pulls a bit of the skin in. Um, but if there's no skin there, especially if it's close, it's burned away. And what about if it's in the hair? Yeah, I would shave around the hair a little bit so I can have access you just would. a little bit, you know, okay. um, uh, to um, get access just a little bit around the edge. I okay. wouldn't take a whole lot off, and especially if it's nearer the front because we yeah. don't want to, I wouldn't shave where it's going to be obvious where you can see. Yeah. And then seal it all up. So once I've done that, we've got leakage from the ears still. So I've got to... Um, so another thing I do there is I do inject quartering through the ears as well as while I'm doing the wound. Mm. Then after I do that, I do exactly the same as in I'll put some powder in. But this time I'll put the um, the Caleb cream, which is a similar to the autopsy gel, but it's heavier and thicker. And that's also, it's pinky when you put it in, but when you smooth it down, you can't see it, it clears. So that's what I'd use to plug so with the family viewing you can't really see yeah because the last thing you want is a viewing with trickling blood yes, from, yes. You know, so that'll that's seal horrendous. all of that up that'll stop that leaking and that we don't want big plasters here because it just doesn't look natural you know but so that will normally stop that and you would then have no leakage there so okay well that's interesting thank you for that mm -hmm.
Uh, I hope that answers your question, Holly. Yeah. Obviously, every situation's different. Yeah, and of course, if you're talking shotgun, you're talking reconstruction normally, especially if it's if the person's you know put the gun near the face or the head or anything like that, and you know, especially under the chin or in the mouth. Uh, if it's in the mouth, sometimes it's the back of the head that comes away. So the face. So the looks... face sometimes is okay, but it can sh the vibration of the shot can shatter the bones as well. So it can disfigure the facial bones, but usually they still end and pop them easier back into place. And again, then that's a bigger wound to sort out, which is basically similar to the smaller one, but there'll be a lot more, you know, cleaning the area, um, making sure that you will probably have a big, a big exit wound um so you're gonna have uh this is it sounds awful but easy access inside to make sure you stop all of that bleeding and clean it but the same principles the quarter and cleaning it out drying it out and then using the autopsy powder and the gel and put a lot of sutures on this one because normally you can close uh, the gunshot if it's been opened up you can usually close it Okay, so, all right, a few things here. One, how do you work on it if it's on the back of the head? Uh, head block. Put the head block right up, right up under the neck. Yep. So the head's yep. like, so instead of the head just sitting, so that's the back of the head, instead of it sitting there, it's up okay. like that. Right here. I've got the head block there. And plus I put my table pretty high at an angle so I can get right, right so in. Right, so you can get in. Okay, um, secondly, if it's blown a piece of skull out, right, mm -hmm. and there's a big cavity there, um, and people are having a viewing, would you do a reconstruction or do you just do all your cleaning and everything and then pack it with cotton and just lay them down on it or something so you don't see it? Like, no, I'd do a reconstruction. You would, and always. If I, if I, uh, yeah, always. And if I have uh, any skull back, I'd wire the skull back, back in. back in. Yeah, I'd wire them in. Because it's best if, if you do it properly as opposed to just... Because even though you're packing, 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 it... When you lie them down, the head's misshapen a yeah, bit, you know, yeah. so you, you need to pack and pack and seal. So if I've got skull that I can attach and rebuild and wire together, I'll put that back on and bring the skin back and suture where okay. I can. Okay, unsavoury question, sorry, but I need to know, how often do you get a piece of skull with the person? Well, sometimes it's shattered and it's still attached. Right. If you know what I mean, it's hanging. Yeah, by skin or yeah, hair or yeah, whatever. Yeah, but yep. it's still attached there. Or okay. sometimes um, where the accident or the homicides happened, all body parts are gathered together and placed in a bag yeah. and put with the person. So, you know, sometimes So you like have that. to actually go through that and go, what have we got here to work with? Yes. And, and again, if we had pieces that separate, or even if they're attached, I'll unattach them because, yeah. and I'll need to clean them because what I've got to do is clean and um, get the bone really clean. So, you know, they're very fine. We've got three tiny fine layers that cover our skull. You know, with the, okay. we need to clean that off. All right. Slippy. Okay, so I know that's best practice to clean, mm -hmm. clean, clean. Yeah. And that's what you do. But why does that have to be done? If someone's just going to be buried and they're not going to be viewed, why do you have to clean, clean, clean? Why can't you just give them a wash, put your quarterant powder stuff in and just... Well, because they have to go back together. You know, it, it's... You know, because the family might say they want to view in at the last minute. Right, so you have to be prepared for that. Yeah, okay. because a lot of times they'll say no, and then like the like before, the family will say no, family, we don't want to. Yeah, and but often they will. Right. You know, because okay. the, I think I think they're afraid to say because of the injury, the injury yeah. and the trauma. So yeah. and then sometimes the funeral director will go back to the family and say or oh, the mortician's done this and done a you know, really good job and, you know, mum, dad, brother, whatever, is really viewable, you know, if you change your mind and you want to view. And sometimes they'll change their mind last minute and say, I just want to view. So <clears throat> I always think you should prepare everybody. But is that a you thing or is that an industry thing? It might be a me thing, I don't know. Yeah, you know, okay. Like, yeah, I don't you know work with I, other morticians, they would yeah. do it? The, the few I've worked with, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Personally close to, yes. Yeah, all right. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, so, yeah. I would like to think a lot of them would do that. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure there's some don't, you know. But, yeah. You know, I would uh, definitely. It's like any injury. I always try and clean it up. Uh, but if it's a full, like, where it's going to take me two weeks to reconstruct and they say no viewing, 
we explain to the family that if we don't do it if we don't do it then you have a view in that last minute it'll be you know a face pack and cover yeah. you know because then i won't spend three weeks or two weeks rebuilding when you know they definitely don't want to view and so and i'll do the cleaning and just making sure it's all clean cauterized and packed and bandaged and so. that's the situation where if they did come in and say at the last minute oh no we need to do something you'd say well how about we do a hand holding or how yeah, about yeah. we oh, you yeah know, you would still blame to view the person uh but that would be covered yeah i know that part where i didn't do the recon it'll be all bandaged and covered and all of that so it would be yeah mm. you can hold okay. the hand interesting all yeah so. all right yeah, so... Very sad. It is very sad, yeah. But as for the uh, injuries that um, you were talking about, I, ha I have never really experienced or had anybody in with multiple shots. I've had a, two or three small wounds, but not multiple automatic weapons. Yeah. So I really can't comment on that. I would just assume that hopefully the mortician... Did if there was a view and they obviously did a, a lot of reconstruction. Depends where it was, and I'm sure they did the best for that person, for their family, and the family. Yeah, yeah. 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 Thanks for the question, yeah. Holly. Good question, Holly. Thank you. All right, guys. So send us your questions. Yes. We're um we're trying to freshen up the channel and have some new topics and things on the channel. Yes. And yeah. the other thing we're doing is we're recording our podcast. We are. <laughs> so after you know basically two and a half years of people going oh. I don't really watch a lot of YouTube, but I'd listen to you if you were on a podcast. We've yep. decided to do it. Um, yep. It's going to be slightly different or a little yeah, bit different. a little bit different, a little yeah, bit different. A little bit. But, um, yeah, so keep your questions coming yep. and, um, yeah, we'll yes. uh, keep you informed. We might post it on the YouTube message to everybody when we've mm -hmm. done our podcast and yeah. where they can see it. I'm still working through the finer details because yeah. everything's a learning curve at this point. Oh, yeah. But anyway, yeah. that's okay. We'll get there. Watch this space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So until next time, guys. Take care. Yeah, stay safe. Bye -bye. See you later. Bye.